In the last video, we saw that the first time humans arrived in India was 70,000 years ago. But archaeologists discovered tools that were much older than that. So, who was inhabiting India when humans came? This is it, men. We have been traveling for 30,000 years and finally we have reached this fine looking piece of land. Look at its curves. Hmm. We're gonna make this our new home. We'll establish a mighty civilization here. Our descendants will rule this land. Huh? What the heck? Why are you leaving this place? Don't you like this fine looking piece of land? Look at its curves. Hmm. Oh, hi. Um, uh, my great, 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 great grandfather. Well, it turns out things are not great. Between reservations and the limited government colleges and jobs, I have to go abroad to study and get a job. Hey, while I have you here, instead of following this route, why the hell didn't you follow that group and go to USA? Would have saved me a ticket cost, huh? Millennials, they say the craziest things. Ha 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 ha. Never mind him. Let's enjoy our new home. Whoopee! What the? Oh hey, honey. Looks like we have guests. Welcome to our place. Great. What now? When humans first arrived in India, they encountered the original inhabitants, a species that looked like us but were not humans. These original inhabitants were our evolutionary cousins. Kind of like how lions and tigers are cousins. And just like how cousins share a common ancestry, humans share a common ancestry with these original inhabitants connected by a fascinating journey called evolution. Generally, when we talk about evolution, this is what we imagine. We started off as monkeys and ended up as humans. People think of it as a linear process. But evolution is more like this. The earliest monkey, which is also called as the homonym ancestor, evolved into different species. These different species actually coexisted with each other for a long time, kind of how lions and tigers coexist, but unlike them, eventually humans were the only ones who survived. But when humans reached India 70,000 years ago, Homo Neanderthals were already living there. In fact, it was a situation where we humans were the invaders. And as with any invasion, it led to a fight. On paper, humans didn't really have a chance. Neanderthals were stronger, they had bigger brains, and they had the home field advantage as they were already living in India, while the humans were the visitors. With all these disadvantages, humans should have lost the war. But not only did humans end up becoming the dominant species, but the Neanderthals and the other species pretty much got wiped out. How was this possible? The answer? Humans had a secret weapon, the ability to form large groups. Sociologists have figured out that normally in any species, the maximum number of members in a group can be 150. Beyond that number, social cohesion breaks down and the group splinters. This is also known as Dunbar's number. So normally, there would have been groups of 150 humans colliding with groups of 150 Neanderthals and the humans would have lost. But humans found a way to break through the Dunbar's number and they were able to do that because humans have one ability that no other species has. They 
or rather we are able to communicate about things which are actually not real and this ability to convey imaginary ideas is one of the most important reasons why humans are the dominant species Dude, I just figured something out. You know this light which you see every day? This light is actually a person and the person is called God and if you pray to him, he's going to make us rich and happy. What? No, that's just light. Trust me, dude, it might look like light, but it's actually an all-powerful being. Now try to imagine it. Oh my god. Hey, why are you bound to the light? Hmm? Why? Why? Because it'll take us to heaven. What is heaven? Oh, it's this imaginary place where you get really cool stuff. It doesn't really exist, but try to imagine it. Humans are able to create large groups around a fictional idea such as the idea of a god or the idea of a kingdom and against this sort of unity Neanderthals and the other cousins really couldn't do much so the humans won Although while this fight was going on there were a few on either side who decided to make love not war There was a certain degree of intermixing between humans and Neanderthals. Studies have shown that Indians still have traces of Neanderthal DNA. In fact, one study shows that if you have a habit of waking early, it is thanks to the Neanderthal DNA in you. So, humans defeated Neanderthals and became masters of the subcontinent. Now what? Now the humans started a civilization that quickly became more technologically advanced than ours. They conquered the entire earth. They solved world hunger and achieved world peace. Soon they started going out in space and met aliens. While well, that would have been fun to imagine, and there are some theories of super advanced prehistoric civilization, but based on archaeological evidence, it is safe to conclude that they were still primarily hunter gatherers. and then came about another great turning point in the story of india the agricultural revolution and this turned out to be one of the most important factors in shaping human history in india agricultural revolution started in india near about 10000 bce and it helped indians acquire something they have not been able to get in the past tens of thousands of years surplus time Wow, what a nice day. I'm going to spend the day thinking about deep thoughts. I will push the boundaries of human knowledge. I'm going to discover the secrets of nature. I'm going to revolutionize mankind. We need to get food. You need to go hunting with your father and uncle. Ah. Before the agricultural revolution, Indians spent a lot of time in acquiring calories. To get any food, ideally the entire tribe would be out hunting or gathering food. It really didn't leave time to do much else. And this was the way of life for thousands of years. But once agriculture was discovered, it changed things. Because now a few people focused on growing food. 
would feed the entire village which means the others now had free time on their hands so a few decided to focus on constructing houses for people to stay they became masons people realized they can reap crops more easily if they have tools so few became tool makers others focused on what people wore and became tailors and jewelers so for the first time ever specialized jobs came into existence so with the agricultural revolution people discovered a way of life whereby they could produce food for a large number of people and settle in one place this gave birth to the idea of cities and this brings us to mehergarh Mehergarh is the first ever city that was established in the Indian subcontinent. The site was inhabited for a period of 4400 years between 7000 BC and 2600 BC. To put that in perspective, Roman Empire, which is often celebrated for its longevity, lasted for about 1500 years. So how did the cave dwellers figure out how to make a city? Same way you do anything, step by step. Initially they lived in caves or temporary settlements as they were experimenting with various agricultural techniques. But one day they discovered that they could grow certain plants and get a regular supply of food. This was the first step in building their city. Since growing crops requires water, it made sense to build it near a water source. Mehergarh was built near the Bolan River. This was the critical second step. Once the crops were sown, the next step was to set up houses near the fields so that they could tend to the crops. The people of Mehergarh were the first in the subcontinent to use bricks in construction. During excavation, houses with 2, 4, 6 and even 10 rooms have been discovered. Once they had houses and fields, a few bright guys also figured out that instead of hunting for animals in the wood, it would be much more efficient to raise them near the house. So they built enclosures near the house for animals. Hence our Indian ancestors took the first step towards a sedentary lifestyle. 9000 years later this affinity towards a sedentary lifestyle led to us becoming a nation where obesity and heart attacks are rampant but hey at that time it was an achievement unlocked. The other thing that people built along with houses were graves. The graves found in Mehergarh also contained ornaments and tools. In fact the huge amount of beads and ornaments found imply a very significant investment of the society in connection with the dead. So here again the ability of humans to believe in an imaginary idea played a key role. The same belief in the imaginary idea which allowed our ancestors to win the battle against Neanderthals also played a key role in formation of the first city. Soon people figured out that using tools like sickles and baskets make agriculture more efficient. Naturally, they would have to set up some kind of workshops to produce these. And when farming started thriving, they saw the need for dedicated storage spaces for grains. That's when the first granaries in the Indian subcontinent were constructed. A granary was similar to a house except for the fact that there was no fire pit. Once the agricultural surplus was attained and the size of the town grew, people started focusing on other activities. One of the earliest activities that humans took up was pottery. It would have made sense to have vessels which could be used to store and transport grain and water. So they set up workshops to build pots and pans. Mehergarh folks were also the first in the subcontinent to use cotton. They also made jewelry from seashells, lapis lazuli, turquoise, black steatite and carnelian. Fashion was very much in the minds of people even tens of thousands of years ago. The fact that these stones were not available in Mehergarh indicates that they even had trade with other cultures. There have been figures of men, women and animal made from terracotta excavated from Mehergarh that indicated that they had artisans among them. But the most astonishing find from Mehergarh is that they were the pioneers in the field of dentistry. 
11 drilled molar crowns from 9 individuals have been recorded at Mehergarh. This was kind of to be expected as the diet they had after settling down was carbohydrate heavy which leads to decay of teeth but the fact that they were able to solve this problem on their own was remarkable. They have discovery of terracotta seals as well. For all we know, that could have been used as some sort of currency to facilitate exchange of goods. So with all this, now you have a completely functioning city. And this was the crescendo of Mehrgarh city and it took them 4400 years to achieve it. Eventually, the Mehrgarh city was abandoned in favour of the larger, more fortified city of now Shehro, which was about 5 miles away. We don't know the reason, but given that Mehrgarh was not fortified, it could be due to security reasons. But Mehrgarh left behind a legacy for the ages. In a way, Harappan civilization took up the template of Mehrgarh, refined it a bit and then created a bunch of such cities. Harappa also has a fascinating history behind it but that is a whole other story thanks for watching